Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your jury service with the Sixth Judicial Circuit Court. As you know, you've been summoned from a random selection through your driver's license or identification card. The Sixth Circuit includes both Pinellas and Pasco counties. The judges and all officers of the court will do their best to make your jury service experience interesting and productive. We know your time away from work and family is valuable, but so is your contribution to the justice system as a juror. Therefore, in the following minutes, we'll examine your role as a potential juror, what you can expect during your time in the jury pool, and what you should know if you're selected to serve as a juror in a criminal or civil case. The right to a trial by a jury of our peers is guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution. The process itself has steadily evolved over the 200 plus years since our forefathers signed this historic document. A vital part of this great constitution was the creation of a system of checks and balances. This system ensures that our courts are independent courts in which decisions of judges are based on the rule of law without undue interference from external pressures. Jury trials are held in three locations in Pinellas County, in downtown St. Petersburg, the Pinellas County Justice Center on 49th Street, and in downtown Clearwater. Juries are called to sit on trials involving criminal and civil cases. Criminal cases can be divided into felonies like murder, which are heard at the circuit court level, or misdemeanors like shoplifting, which are heard at the county court level. Civil cases can be heard in county and circuit court and usually involve a dispute over something of value. In many states, as many as 12 citizens are called to form a jury. However, in Florida, six citizens will serve on most juries. The exceptions are for first-degree murder or for property condemnation proceedings. Then 12 persons will be called on those cases. Your service as a potential juror began when you received a summons to serve on jury duty. The summons identified the time and courthouse location and also those reasons for which you could be automatically excused from jury duty. If you still have some questions about your service, please contact your jury coordinator for today and he or she will address your questions and concerns. During your service, relax with your fellow citizens in the jury pool and wait to be called for your assignment. Your jury coordinator will advise you as to the location of restrooms and refreshments while you're waiting. The Florida legislature has mandated that our courts use the one day or one trial system of jury selection. That means whether you're called to serve on an actual jury or not, your jury service for that day will be recognized as fulfilling your obligation for one year. The average length of a jury trial is one and a half to two days. However, some trials do last longer. The actual length of each trial will be discussed during the selection process. If the length of the trial creates a hardship, you will be given the opportunity to discuss this matter with the judge. If you are called to join a jury panel for a trial, your group will be directed into a courtroom where the selection process for the jury trial will begin. All rise, circuit court in for As your group assembles in the courtroom, you will be introduced to the judge and officers of the court involved in the trial for which you are being considered as a juror. In civil and criminal cases, the presiding judge oversees the progress of the trial and resolves issues of evidence and questions of law. Among the other courtroom personnel are representatives of the constitutional offices of sheriff, state attorney, public defender, and clerk of the circuit court. Bailiffs are assigned to each judge and are Pinellas County deputy sheriffs representing Sheriff Bob Gualteri, a constitutional officer. In the criminal trials, the prosecuting attorney represents the constitutional office of state attorney Bernie McCabe. In criminal cases where the defendant cannot afford a private defense attorney, a public defender is present and represents Sixth Circuit Public Defender Bob Dillinger. A deputy clerk of the court is also present in the courtroom during the trial. The deputy clerk represents the constitutional office of clerk of the court, Ken Burke. The deputy clerk is responsible for swearing in jurors, witnesses, and recording the submission of evidence, among other duties. These constitutional officers and their staff are dedicated to assisting you in your role as a juror. A court reporter may also be present in the courtroom and is an officer of the court. The court reporter is charged with recording and preserving the record of the trial. Now to the voir dire, which in French means to speak the truth. This is the occasion in which you and members of your jury panel will be questioned by the attorneys representing both sides in the criminal or civil case. They will ask questions about your background, employment, family or personal interests, and then form an opinion about whether or not to select you to sit on the jury. You are encouraged to respond openly and honestly to the questions directed to you. 
The attorneys involved have a series of challenges they may use to eliminate certain prospective jurors. Remember, in most cases, only six jurors and perhaps two alternates will be selected for the trial. Not being selected is no reflection upon your worthiness or sincerity to serve. If you are not selected for one trial, there is a chance you may be called to another jury panel during your period of service, and the process of voir dire will be repeated for a separate trial. Again, should you not be selected for a trial, your service will still be noted. Should you be selected to be a trial juror, you will serve until the trial is completed. All jurors and panel will be told of the trial's anticipated length so that any difficulties with their service can be addressed before the trial proceeds. Business dress is the correct attire for jury duty. On the rare occasion that a jury is sequestered, all potential jurors will be given the appropriate time to make the arrangements necessary to be away from work and family in order to serve. If serving as a sequestered juror is too great a hardship, the presiding judge can excuse those jurors who cannot participate. Once you have been selected as a juror, you will be issued a juror's badge, which must be worn at all times, including meal breaks, or while around the courthouse. The badge puts others on notice that you cannot be approached to discuss the case on trial. You cannot initiate any discussions about the case, not even to family members. If violations of this rule are committed while the trial is underway, they must be reported to the judge or bailiff. Your job as a juror and finder of fact now really begins. Whether you are selected for a criminal or civil trial, listen carefully to the testimony provided by the witnesses. Look at the evidence submitted. Your responsibility as a finder of fact is to weigh the testimony and evidence submitted in an impartial manner. Remember, the opening and closing statements are not evidence. Listen to the instructions from the judge. The judge will inform you about procedures and the law. The judge will instruct you how you should conduct yourself outside the trial courtroom. These instructions are to ensure the proper progress of the trial and to avoid issues that could result in a mistrial, which can be costly in time and money. The bailiff is your contact if you have any questions or concerns for the court, or if you are having trouble hearing the testimony, seeing the evidence, or any aspect of the proceedings. Please raise your hand and the bailiff will assist you. A bench conference is a discussion to which jurors are generally not privy. The bench conference between the judge and the attorneys usually involves an issue of law and can take place in the courtroom rather than take time to recess the trial. As a juror, you will hear in open court everything you need to make your decision. As for your personal comfort, be assured there will be ample opportunities during trial recesses for a comfort break, to stretch your legs, or to enjoy a meal. Remember, you have an obligation not to discuss the trial during those breaks. When the trial has concluded, you and your fellow jurors will receive your deliberating instructions from the judge, and your panel will retire to a jury deliberation room to begin discussions on a verdict. A jury foreman will be selected, and during these discussions, all members are encouraged to maintain an open mind to others' opinions and concerns, review the evidence, form an opinion, then vote in accordance with the judge's instructions on the law. Again, attention will be given to juror comfort, meals, and other needs during this time. Once the jury reaches a verdict, the bailiff will notify the judge, and the verdict will be read in open court. All jury verdicts in Florida must be unanimous in civil and criminal cases. The only exception is during the penalty phase of a capital criminal case. On that occasion, a jury's majority vote can be accepted as a sentencing recommendation to the judge. At the conclusion of your service, you are free to go with the thanks and appreciation of the judge, all those who were involved in the trial, and the citizens of this state. Jury duty can be the most valuable and rewarding public service you can perform. It is a profoundly serious responsibility to be involved in deliberations with fellow citizens which can affect the life, rights, freedoms, and finances of another human being. We are practicing a principle today that was handed to us generations ago by our founding fathers the right to a trial by a jury of our peers. Thank you for answering the call to jury service.
I'm Beverly Plummer, a magistrate with the circuit, and I would like to stress a few points about technology and the courts before you find out whether you will serve on a jury. Jurors must make their decisions based exclusively on the evidence and testimony presented during the trial. Even now, as prospective jurors, you must obey certain rules to ensure that happens. Under no circumstances are you to look up the case in question on the internet or research the case in any way. Under no circumstances are you to watch any TV coverage or read any newspaper articles about the case. In addition, from this moment forward, you must not discuss the case with anyone, not with your spouse, significant other, child, parent, or any of your fellow prospective jurors until you have been either excused from jury duty or you have been selected as a juror and have begun deliberations. To be clear, you cannot discuss the case with other jurors until you have begun deliberations in the jury room. We know we live in the age of technology, the age of smartphones, tablets, and laptops, and that folks use these and other devices to, among other things, stay in touch with family and friends. But do not, again, do not use them to communicate about the case. Don't tweet, post, blog, message, or email about the case. You may inform folks that you have been selected as a juror and how long the case may take, but you cannot give out any information about the case, including the people involved in the case. In the event a judge allows you to keep your smartphones, tablets, or other electronic devices with you, you cannot use them to take photographs, video recordings, or audio recordings of the proceedings in the courtroom or your fellow jurors. Why do we have all these restrictions? What's at stake? our constitutional rights. Everyone is entitled to a fair and impartial trial before a jury of his or her peers. And the only way we can make sure such a trial takes place is to make sure jurors are not distracted by their electronic devices and make their decisions based only on the evidence and testimony in court. What happens if a juror researches a case online during a trial? a mistrial may be ordered, and the case would have to be tried again. The prosecutors and defense attorney would have to prepare and proceed to trial all over again. And a new jury would have to be selected too, all of this at great cost to you, the taxpayer. Again, don't research the case online, don't discuss it in person online or on the telephone, if you are selected to be a juror, you must make your decision based on the testimony and evidence you are presented inside the courtroom. Thank you.